Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my dear friends, fans, and colleagues, no matter where you are and when you're listening. Welcome back to Voices of the Sacred Feminine. And if you're new to the show, I'm the host, Karen Tate, and my guests and I discuss uh, many of the things my my mom told me uh, not to dare discuss at the dinner table at night, Uh, and uh, those topics are often uh, sex, power, gender, religion, politics, and um, here on the show, I uh, like to tackle all of those things with a broad spectrum of visionaries and forward thinkers, both women and men, from a divine feminine, or you might say a right brain point of view. Uh, Some of these ideas uh, you might not uh, even realize fit comfortably under the goddess umbrella. And uh, I like to think uh, some of these new ideas and values are ones that uh, can shift us away from patriarchal domination and help us manifest a much-needed new normal. And today, uh, my guest is uh, Dawn Del Vecchio, and our topic is uh, Waking Up and Exiting the Matrix. So uh, before we get to that, uh, let me tell you a little bit about Dawn. She is the founder of the Return of the Priestess speaker series, uh, the Return of the Priestess private community, and the lineage bearer of the Mother Spirit Priestess line. Uh, She served as priestess for more than 37 years with a deep background in goddess lore, ceremony, spiritual counsel, channeling, tarot, and soul astrology. And she hosts retreats. Uh, She offers online courses, tarot and astrology readings for women uh, that are called to the path of sacred feminine leadership. And um, I'd like to just say uh, welcome, Dawn. I'm really interested in your topic. Hi there, Karen. Thank you so much for having me on today, and I've been really looking forward to this conversation today. Okay. Um, So, Dawn, um, our topic, again, let me just uh, repeat it. Um, You know, it it is uh, waking up and exiting the matrix. Uh, Just so we're all on the same page, um, let's start by how you define the matrix. Yeah, this is a great question. Uh, Many of us know the the movie, The Matrix, and I've heard some people say that it's a documentary and not a a fictitious tale. I see it as somewhat symbolic, so there's definitely a kind of that the idea of the red pill, blue pill, Uh, but I'll describe to you how I'm applying this. I'm really looking at this through a very spiritual lens, a lens of the soul, the soul who that that it lives through many incarnations in a journey away from and then back toward the divine, toward our union with the one, the divine love that is often called the goddess or the great mystery, what have you. So uh, we are living in a a kind of simulation. It's a simulation that we have co-created as a, a one collective through our consciousness in which we perceive ourselves to be separate from each other and from the divine. That's what I mean by the matrix. And it's, ah. it's the simulation, the dream spell of our our separation from that which we would call God and from each other so, who are all part of that. So am I am I getting it? Let me just say it back to you in, in my words. Uh, the separation, uh, you know, as you know, kind of using the red pill, pill blue pill analogy, um, because we are separated from the source, so to speak, you know, however you language it, divine feminine, uh, cosmic web, whatever. Um, uh, let's just say that's the blue pill, and the and the rest of us out here, you know, humanity, um, in in its separateness from, um, you know, creation or goddess or the cosmic web, uh, that's the red pill. So that's the, the delineation, um, you know, the red pill, blue pill analogy. 
Yeah, the, the blue pill is when we stay, we identify with our egos, with the dream state, the belief in separation, attack, belief that matter is the body and the material matter is solely who we are. The red pill is when we wake up and we realize we are all one. And when I hurt another, I hurt myself. That when, right, I, right, when right. I see us as separate and worthy of punishment, attack, and judgment, I'm actually taking my own poison. I see. Okay. And is that um, is that sort of the greater context of uh, the wake up and, and exit call that, um, uh, you know, it, I mean, it's, it, I'm sure it's probably more complicated than, you know, we're just hurting ourselves uh, in this separation. Yes. Well, the, the greater context, I would say, is that we are at the end of a spiritual season, Uh, We are at a time when uh, multiple kind of cycles of time are coming to a close in order for new cycles to begin, whether you're looking at things like the end of the Mayan calendar, the the procession of the equinoxes, the shifting into the age of Aquarius, the end of the Kali Yuga and into the next uh, higher ascending Yuga. Uh, All of these are symbolic of a period of time on Earth when we are actually being influenced for our consciousness to shift. And that means that there's, there's um, the opportunity for us to remember, to, to red pill ourselves, to remember our oneness in love. Okay. Well, and let me ask you specifically, because, you know, you do astrology uh, yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, I had uh, a guest on last week who was talking about uh, astrology and feng shui. And um, she Mm -hmm. said, and I wonder if you agree, since you're talking about these different passages, uh, she said we are in a time now, and I think it's going to go on for a while, where we're going to see a lot of transparency and accountability. Um, I don't remember what the astrological jargon was for that, Mm -hmm. Uh, but she said, you know, maybe that's why we're seeing all of the stuff happening, um, you know, with... um, You know, with Trump, for instance, you know, all of this is coming to light and uh, he's being indicted and, you know, and probably on many other levels, too, we're starting to see things um, the way they really are. And I guess it's given us a chance to uh, maybe fix it if we want humanity to evolve. Yes, this is a time of revelation. Uh, and, and I don't, I, I mean that and don't mean that with regard to the biblical text. Uh, that is allegorical to a period of time when truth is revealed. And that's where we are. And there are many more truths to re- re- be revealed. I mean, you know, any circumstance with a presidential, a former president, or any of that stuff is but one aspect of this. It's happening on all levels. In modern day parlance, we might call this disclosure. And this is not just about disclosure of extraterrestrials, but about uh, what we could say is uh, uh, the puppet master behind the, 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 the leaders, the global leaders, and the, the event circumstances that look like anything from um, fair politics to uh, illegal uh, problems to poisoning the earth to... Um, natural disasters that aren't to many of these things. And many of these are already being revealed, and there are many who are already seeing these things. Um, But as that that revelation unfolds, there are those forces who don't – it's like the little guy behind the curtain in Oz. He doesn't want to be caught. He doesn't want to be found out. So there's a lot of smoke screen going on, too. It's a slow process of unfolding and seeing what's what's really been going on. So how long, uh, you know, how long is this cycle of revelation going to last? And can you see astrologically what happens next? What cycle do we go in after the revelatory cycle? Well, this is the million-dollar question, Karen, because none of us really know. Okay. So, all right, so let me just tune in a little bit to that question so I can be concise. Um, hmm. How long the revelatory period is, is really hard to say. I think it's, in a sense, an individual experience 
of seeing. And many of us are already in that place. We're we're really beyond the the uh, you know blue red politics of America and seeing a much bigger scope of what has been false to fact, and then making choices to begin to rebuild a, a new a new way of living in our individual. And and this kind of leads. And I do want to touch on the astrology. I'm going to I'm going to weave that in a moment. But I want to speak to the sort of paradox of the nature of our reality. So we talked about this was related to the first question. What is the matrix? The matrix is a dream spell in which we believe we're all separate. The when we step out of the matrix or to use the analogy to take the red pill, we start to remember that we are actually all one. And in that recognition, as paradoxical as it seems, by us tuning inward to heal and clear our own shadow material, our own places where we deny and fool ourselves and believe our own BS, we actually feed the energetic into the collective for a greater collective awakening. So with that hmm. now, let's, let's weave in the astrology a bit. So as an evolutionary astrology, astrologer, I look specifically at the outer planets and the nodes of the moon. The outer planets move very slowly, so I'm going to touch into Pluto. Pluto is the symbol of the soul in a person's individual astrology chart uh, in, my, in the evolutionary astrology lens, and also at a collective level. Now, Pluto is moving. Right now it's back in Capricorn, but it's moving into Aquarius. So Pluto and Capricorn, the, the sim, symbology of Capricorn is top-down control. Control at any cost. Suppression of the individual, of, of the, the collective for the individual at the top. Aquarius is, is a dispersion of power to the people. So mm. it's inevitable that in the next 20 years, the systems of of um, top-down control, including governmental systems, are going to unravel into smaller systems of collectives, collective. And I don't mean communism here, and I don't mean some of the things that we're seeing play out. What I mean is an honoring of the unique individual, which is part of the Inquarian signature, and uh, in, in a way that supports everybody's capacity okay to live in liberty, freedom, and sovereignty. Hmm. So my okay. guess is that by the time Pluto has transited out of Aquarius 20-some years from now, the world is going to be a different place. Hmm. Now, one, one other thing I want to say here, and then, and then I'll pause uh, to see what, you know, where you want to kind of you know, go, go with this. Uh, when we look at the shifting of ages, so... So, uh, you know, we've been in the age of Pisces for about 2,000 years before that. We were in the age, uh, it goes backwards, we were in the age of Aries before that, the age of Taurus. There's about a 300-year um, transition period. So if we see Pluto moving into Aquarius as the signature of the formal transition into the age of Aquarius, and not everyone agrees with that, but, but that's my take on it. We still have anywhere between, I don't know, 150 to 300 years, depending on how you, you, you slice and dice that, before we're actually formally into a uh, really a different era completely. And again, hmm. to reiterate, the, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So, so that last part of what you said, it sounds like we're in that Pluto Aquarius um, alignment for a pretty long time. Then, I mean, it potentially as much as a hundred years. Well, Pluto will go through Aquarius for twenty years. Okay. So that's like the like the the crux, the the crucible period, the transition where where the awakening happens more on a collective scale, where consciousness shifts and. People begin to be aware of, you know, that 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 the world is not what we thought it was. Uh, all of the all, some of the stuff I've touched on and much more, you know, that we're part of a galactic family. I mean, many many things in all areas that our thoughts create. That if we attack another, we're poisoning ourselves. That if you know, when we judge yeah. others, we're we're judging ourselves. All of those things are the consciousness of humanity will shift. 
greatly in these 20 years, but it's still a longer stretch of time after that before uh, the world is a radically different place. Hmm. Um, Wow. So you're making me um, think so many different things here uh, because obviously, um, you know, as you said before, it sounds like, you know, we're going to rid ourselves of this, you know, sort of top-down, um, you know, patriarchy, you know, maybe authoritarian governments around the world. People like Putin yep. will be a thing of the past. Um, <clears throat> but then I do wonder, you know, how does the, you know, the U.S. And, and democracies fit into that? You know, because, you know, we're not naive enough to think that, uh, you know, there's not corruption in democracies. You know, democracies are only as good as the people Uh, that get elected to office, so to speak. Um, And, um, you know, it makes you wonder if uh, when things break down and settle out, if maybe there aren't big countries then, you know, if uh, it's Mm -hmm. just uh, smaller communities uh, interacting with one another, you know, hopefully peacefully and in uh, justice and uh, equality and that sort of thing. I don't know, you know, it uh it it seems like uh, we're open to um wow, quite quite the unknown uh that you know none of us except have maybe experienced in sci-fi books or fantasy novels, right? Mm. Yeah, uh well, a, a few things to say there. Um One is that there are already many people who are visioning New Earth, as we sometimes call it, and literally taking making choices and actions to live that way. To your your question about big governments and stuff, yeah, if I were a gambling woman, I'd say, yeah, those are going to collapse. Those are not; they do not serve. They were experiments that worked for a level of consciousness. There's going to be there is an already underway a fundamental transformation, evolution in human consciousness such that the requirement for that level of top-down control won't be necessary. But it's a slow process. We're in a very dense form of consciousness right now with a lot of fear-based programming and a lot of separation identity. So this this is not something, it's difficult for the the third dimensional mind to vision it. But when we look at things like democracy, democracy is, if we really think about it, it's a kind of mob rule. And the United States is actually a constitutional republic. It is not a democracy. However, because of the voting structure and stuff that's in there, and it's served for a time, and what we're seeing is the level of corruption that happens in any government that has control. You know, there's the old saying, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. And the mm-hmm. infiltration of that corruption at all levels of government now is such that we're, it's rotting from the inside. So, and, and that's as it should be because the consciousness as we evolve will no longer be a vibrational match to that level of, of structure, let's say, societal structure. Okay. Well, so um, do you have some ideas about what exiting the matrix looks like? Can you give us some examples? Absolutely. This is a great question. Uh, And I would, uh, I'll I'll sort of overarch this with with this um, thing. Consciousness exits first and then action second, or that's kind of the, the priority. So all right, so let's talk about consciousness first and actions and how that comes together. If we, if we are not the stewards of our own consciousness, we look outward for, for um, information, confirmation, identity, um, uh, what the nature of reality is, uh, structures of society and how they ought to work and what does and doesn't work. And we can be very easily fooled by seemingly trustworthy authorities external to us. But the amount of light coming in to, is because our solar system is traveling through the photon belt, because of the solar mass ejections, because of the Schumann resonance and the age we are in, is allowing us to begin to awaken our own consciousness to our, our divine guidance, you know, the divine downloads, our inner truth. And as we do that, we withdraw our attention and our, um, 
cooperation with those external authorities. So a very simple, a very basic illustration of this could be the countless number of us who don't watch TV and we do not watch the news. We, we don't do it. We don't, I don't own a TV. When I come to a hotel room, I put a, towel, uh, a sheet, a uh, scarf that I bring specifically to cover the TV. We do not consume information that is very tainted by agendas and corruption. We go within to receive our own guidance. And that guidance becomes more clear as we withdraw our consciousness from the old matrix, again, using that term, and, and then we begin to follow guidance. And then we start taking actions accordingly, whether that's our own creative self-expression, our own devotion to the divine, our own um, creating communities. So now let's talk about action. For example, I know people who are literally exiting, uh, they're withdrawing their attention, their investments, their energy from, um, from the system, whatever, whatever country they're in, and uh, creating small communities where they're growing their own food, they're harvesting their own water, they have their own well, they're not paying mortgages because they've bought outright or they're in collective community. They're actually building their own communities. They're pulling their kids out of the public school systems. They're homeschooling based on their own spiritual values, whatever those are, whether I agree with them or not. They're, they're, they're following their height. They're going vertical with their consciousness rather than horizontal. They're looking hmm. to, to, to receive higher guidance and follow that instead of external authority. <clears throat> well, <laughs> um, uh, I, I hear what you're saying, and, um, I, and, and forgive me for saying this, because I know it's going to sound judgmental, and I guess it's the antithesis of what you're talking about, but um, I, uh, I imagine, so what if a lot of these people... Uh, you know, their so-called divine guidance is we live in the handmaid's tale, you know. Um, you know, that's in a way that, that could be kind of scary because what if their divine guidance is not truly a thing? And I know this sounds fearful, um, but, uh, you know, it, it's hard not to be fearful and, and uh, trust on people, you know, trust people that, you know, might not believe in science or carbon dating or medicine or, uh, you, you know what I'm saying? I mean, um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, yeah. talk me off the ledge. <laughs> well, okay. So first of all, so it's interesting, you know, The Handmaid's Tale, interesting you pulled that up. I've not watched the show, but the book, long ago, Margaret Atwood, was one of the books I used in my, in my senior thesis for my undergrad um, thesis to defend. So I'm familiar with it from that angle. I don't know how that's been developed into uh, a TV show over the years. But um, that is based on top-down control. To control mm -hmm. an entire society based on those, uh, dog, dog, we'll say, religious dogmatic values, uh, requires that level of top-down control. And that's not what I'm talking about. If people right, want to choose right. to live in a small community based on, on dogma and fear, that's a fear-based, control-based system, that, that's their choice. However, if we now weave in the frequency of consciousness awakening, the symbolic red pill, where people begin to remember that they are the divine child of the one, that we are all one, that when we control, hurt, harm, denigrate another, we are harming ourselves. In that consciousness, such a scenario as The Handmaid's Tale is not even possible. And that's why I say I get it. fundamental transformation in consciousness is what we are looking at in the long term. So when we look through the okay. lens of 3D consciousness based in separation and fear, we can't really perceive it. Got we it. have to be Got in it. a higher okay. state. Yeah. Does that help? All right. So, 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 okay, so that makes sense when we all arrive there. But I would, I would imagine the road to getting there would, could be quite messy. You know, yeah. as as some yeah. places are evolved and other places. I mean, I, I mean, I, 
I don't know. I guess I've kind of lost faith in a lot of, um, I'll just say Americans or, or humanity, uh, you know, because I can see where, like you said, some people are already reaching for that, um, you know, higher state of awareness and the values you profess, while the others, as they see change happening, and the change is not the world that they uh, grew up in uh, and they don't like the change because, you know, uh, we humans don't, you know, we like the familiar, um, I, I I would almost imagine that some of these people would buckle down even tighter trying to hold on to their control as they see uh, even more shift out there that look nothing like they can even comprehend. Oh, that's precisely what's happening. That's precisely what's happening. And it's happening from the top down because the ones who benefit from the consciousness we've been in are those who are at the very small percentage who are at the top. And so, um, you know, the, 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 the information we get through the media, through politicians through all of that stuff is actually where we're we're seeing the most resistance and what we're seeing at the ground level of those who are waking up who are deeply devoted to the divine whether they call that god goddess or whatever are really exiting in whatever ways they can to do their own thing and and create their own uh communities or exchanges or growing their vegetables or you know all of that it is going to be a bumpy road it is already a bumpy road and this is part of our awakening process this is this is part of it okay I'm in. uh it is very affordable uh it's only uh ten dollars a show all right so let's get back to our topic, uh, Waking Up and Exiting the Matrix with uh, Dawn Del Vecchio. Um, so Dawn, um, do you have ideas about more we might expect as this transition unfolds and um, how we can support people who are just waking up, you know, even, our, even ourselves? How do we, you know, prevent ourselves from, you know, thinking we're just, um, you know, ground ourselves, you know, to feel stable? Yeah, yeah, great question. Questions. So um, in terms of what we're going to see, I think there's there's uh, two, two things I want to speak into at least here. One is that we're going to see increasing division, divisiveness. And we've already seen the last three and a half years. It's been one thing after another of divisiveness. And and what this, at least from my lens, what I'm seeing, and I'm not alone in this, is these these divisions, whether it's identity, politics, war, who's the bad guy, who's the good guy, politics, I mean, you just name it, you know, choices for medical sovereignty and choices, all of that stuff. These are all based in separation, a belief in separation, the old consciousness, right? And, and what so that divisiveness, it keeps us at each other's throats. It keeps us in the battlefield of the denser 3D consciousness. But what happens is some people start getting like, I just, I, I can't give this energy anymore. This is exhausting. It's burning me out. Or, or we've already had been called to, to literally to stop going horizontal and to go vertical to the divine. To remember that we are a divine child of the one loving creator. And that and and when that happens, we stop playing in the divisiveness. We stop choosing to be in a polarized marching against, beating the drums against. And we start going, Wow, this is a dream of separation, and I am here to be a loving force in the world. So this is this is the, the, the journey. It's the journey that we're taking on. And it's a soul, it's like the soul awakens, the remembrance of love's presence within our consciousness awakens. And we, we withdraw from the battlefield of right, wrong, blue, red, black, white, whatever, whatever the divisiveness is. Um, and, and so how we support others is to 
help, there's, there's two pieces here. One is to help them, first of all, realize there is a higher order beyond this dream spell, that they are loved without condition by our divine mother, father, God, that they are a child of the divine one and that through, through a process of healing trauma, for example, of shadow work, of forgiveness, of self-care, and of devotion to reconnecting with the divine, and I would say also a devotion to grounding into Mother Earth, that we come to a greater peace and we pop out of the matrix. Okay. Well, all right. And and again, you know, you're 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 convincing me here. You know, lately I've been thinking a lot about the sacred feminine as a vehicle to ascension. So, you know, mm-hmm. I'm um I, I think I'm on this road, but you know, I'm not totally convinced yet, you know. I mean, does this mean we don't vote? Um, does this mean we just sort of abdicate our responsibility as um, responsible citizens to, um, you know, try to put better people in office? Um, you know, because if we just drop out, you know, I think about that kind of leaves a vacuum for the fanatics to kind of, you know, it would be like the, you know, the patients in the asylum, you know, running the running the hospital, you know. Um, you know, that, that, that sort of scares me a little bit, a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, huh, this is a, hmm, let me feel into how best to answer this because this is, this is, again, we're, we're, we're kind of going back and forth around the, the, the 3D matrix and consciousness and a shift in consciousness. So yeah. if, if we believe that the system as it is, is fixable, that we will continue to give energy and to vote. And, and this is something we each have to come to in our, own, in our own hearts and minds. And if we see the systems as utterly corrupted and no longer of value to us, then we will withdraw our energies from it and choose differently. And there has to be, again, there's the fear within the 3D realm that, you know, if we don't keep supporting the system as it is, then crazy people will get in office. And then there are those of us who say there's already crazy people in all realms, all the way down to librarians. And, and so it really is a, it's a decision made based on a consciousness and a co- conscience, like your conscience, you know, your moral mm-hmm. compass, if you will. But then also your consciousness, are you attuned and aligned with it? Are you, are, is your energetic belief system locked into the, that, the world as we know it, the world of separation, or is it locked into the higher order? Because when you're locked yeah. into the divine energy, then you have different kinds of powers of vision and capacity that may seem magical from the old consciousness where you actually are beginning to command your reality. And again, this is beyond the concept of our physical brain. It is a surrender to the divine and a recognition that by that surrender, we are guided. And Mm -hmm. those principles can't always apply to when we're looking out in the world and going, wow, things are kind of nutso out here. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And maybe it would be like, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to you. say that, you know, I like the analogy of the, of the, the Titanic. And this may sound a bit rather um, despairing, but this is my, this is my uh, belief, and I'm not alone. This is my way that I'm living my life. And uh, what I've seen after, you know, trying my best to vote the system into improvement uh, <laughs> um, is that, you know, on the Titanic, the Titanic hits an iceberg beneath the surface. And it's sinking. We can choose to get on a lifeboat and get off the Titanic, or we can try and rearrange the deck chairs on the Titanic. And (laughs) this is where we each have to decide, you know, what actions am I taking in my life in whatever realm, whether it's politics, government, it doesn't matter what it is. 
am I rearranging deck chair, chairs here to try and prop up a boat that's sinking? Or am I ready to get on a, a dinghy and, and save myself and land somewhere else and start something new? And more and more, well, I, I like that. taking that second option. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I kind of like that analogy, um, and I guess there's part of me that would say, well, maybe I want to do something more substantial than than rearrange the deck chairs. Maybe I want to go down below deck and and patch the hole. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I, look, I love what you're saying. You know, I would love nothing better uh, than for us to manifest this new normal. You know, in sacred feminine circles, we've been talking about this for decades. You know, uh, people. Yeah. Um, you know, the world over, um, you know, living by values of the sacred feminine rather than these values of domination and exploitation and patriarchy. Um, But, you know, I think about um, all of us who are dependent on government, you know, those of us on Social Security, maybe, you know, people collecting veterans benefits, um, you know, all of the things, the good things that government uh, props up that um, you know allows so many of us to live, and if those things suddenly crumbled, um, then you know it's then it's like then what you know? Um, I, and I and I worry about the people who say, oh well, we want the government so small we could, um, and I and I know you're probably aiming toward no big government, but you know they say we want the government so small you could drown it in the bathtub. The only thing our tax dollars should go to is the military industrial complex to um, defend us in a time of war. You know it's this transition period that really worries me uh, because yeah. I'm just so afraid it's the inmates in the asylum that are going to be in charge for years and they're going to hurt a lot of people as you know while they um you know try to take over and i don't know establish some theocracy um or uh or or you know authoritarian government and and i know this is fear-based i know it's uh, i'm coming from a place of fear but it's hard to just surrender to the belief that it's all going to go okay because we can't flip the switch and have everybody in this new place at the same time, you know. Um, that's mm. the part that I have trouble with, you know, the, that letting go of that. Yeah, well, I think this is why it has to be a very slow transition. And quite honestly, I mean, we'll see shifts in our lifetimes, but the, the real shift is going to take more than our incarnation. Uh, true. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think some some of your fears are unwarranted, although validly understood. Absolutely. And and yeah. I would also say that there are many of us who argue that the inmates of the asylum have already taken over. But it's not the Handmaid's Tale fear. Uh, that's that's not it. It's yeah. it's the corruption. It's the siphoning of the money. It's the creating dependency of people. It's the, the, the infiltration of anti-love and anti-divine forces in entertainment, in uh, the, the child sex trafficking, in many, many arenas. The, 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 the inmates in the asylum have long since taken over. And there's a pointing at those who are fundamentally religious as if they have the power to so- simply come in and take that over. And I live well, in, in a community with many deeply spiritual Christian people, and they just want to be left alone. Now, I'm not saying hmm. there aren't rigid, religious fundamentalists, but I yeah. have not yet, and, I, and of course I have anecdotal experience, but I have not met right. one Christian, despite the fact that I have a goddess temple on my property in a rural yeah. area, who is yeah. has any interest whatsoever in converting me, changing me, shaming me, none of that stuff. But what I no, do I get see it. is the poor being sacrificed at the altar of the uber wealthy. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I yeah. get it. I mean, look, I was a Bernie Sanders supporter, you know, about the 99% versus the 1%. I'm totally there with you. Uh, you know, I get it. But, you know, I also know that Mike Pence was a dominionist. And, you, so, you know, listeners just need to go Google the seven mountains of dominionism. And here he made it all the way up to vice president. 
Um, and, you know, so were some of the other people in the cabinet. So um, anyway, uh, I, hear your, I hear what you're saying, Dawn, and I, and I appreciate you nudging me closer and closer, uh, you know, out of this fear-based place, uh, you know, mm-hmm. because I want to believe this. I do want to believe this. I, I'm just trying to figure out how, um, how I can reconcile it uh, and... Um, and, and feel comfortable with it, you know. Um, so, so yeah. tell me, um, it, is it necessary to try to wake other people up? Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you for that. No, it's not. It, it really is not, because again, this this is where the paradox. Uh, okay, let let me kind of tie that last thing you said in about reconciling with this question here, because it's it's a good important point. The it, the mind. The left brain mind, the rational mind, cannot grasp the numinous. And we try. We try. This is the reconciling how, the how, the how. There is a deep request, a deep, not request, what's the word? Invitation to surrender to, to the divine, to surrender to divine mother and trust that there is an overarching love frequency of which we are all a part, a a, a piece of, that is blooming, emerging, awakening within the consciousness of humanity. And many women are at the leading edge of this. And because we are the the physical embodiment of the divine feminine, so we are the, the emissaries, if you will, of her. The awakening of the feminine aspect of God, the she who is the mother, and we cannot take a left brain rational mind that has been conditioned into seeing things as discrete separate parts and, and, and assess or figure out unity consciousness. It doesn't work. There's a mm-hmm. surrender and a trust uh, uh, to the divine. Let go, let God. And a recognition that in that we awaken into a higher state which then unfolds the new earth, births the new earth, if you will. And so in that, trying to convert others is just operating from that old system. Whether we're trying to wake people up to whatever our belief system is, is the exact same as the fear and concern you express over uh, religious fundamentalism turning our world into a handmaid's tale. Mm Mm-hmm. So it it really is an inside job, and that's, again, the paradox of spiritual truth. We are one. We are one. That which I do to the least of my sisters, I do unto myself. It is my love that supports my own awakening and thereby emanates into the field for others to awaken and recognize that we don't have to play this game the way we've played it. It worked when it worked, and now we can do something else. Okay. Okay. Wow. Um, so um, it's a lot to think about, and mm-hmm. um, I I want to I want to kind of give you the last word here or the last words. Uh, is there anything I haven't asked you that um, you know you want to share? You know to kind of wrap this topic up. Um, and also, um, you know, how do people reach you and what do you want people to know about your work besides what I've said? Oh, that's great. Well, thank you for this. Thank you for, very much for this opportunity to speak and to share my reflections um, and the guidance that I'm receiving. Um, I would say one of the things I would like to share is that um, it's possible, and there are many of us uh, dedicating ourselves to visioning what life would be like beyond the matrix. So things like living in harmony with the earth, that the children are safe, that we don't get triggered by other people's egos because we're in a recognition of our oneness, that we're more, we can read people more because we're more empathic and more attuned. Uh, so many, you know, there's many, 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 many ways that we can vision that. But, but visioning that, we're creating this as we go. So when we choose, every time we feel fear, like, you know, trying to work out, how is this going to work? Oh, my God, the old systems are going to collapse, and then I won't have my pension anymore or something like that. Uh, My husband Mm -hmm. and I have those concerns as well. Um, 
rather saying, well, what's beyond that? Oh, when I walk in the forest and I know that there's no more chemtrails and that the trees are growing and I, I can attune myself to the trees and the children are safe. Whatever excites you, give some time to that on a regular basis. Choose to pivot from the fear-based uh, worries. Say, right, here I am in fear. Okay, I can't resolve that. My fear about that future scenario doesn't do anything. Let me instead leverage the power of my divine mind to vision something I do want to see, that I want to plant as a seed for my grandchildren and great-grandchildren and the seven generations to come. So that would be my, my final word, if you will, to share and to invite all of us, myself included, to, to do that. And then um, if anyone resonates with, with what um, I'm sharing, you can go to my website, dondelvecchio.com. You can also go to returnofthepriestess.com. And my YouTube channel, where I share a lot of this stuff um, on a regular basis, a couple times a week. I have, to, I have hundreds of videos on YouTube. And you could just look up, go to YouTube and look up my name. John Del Vecchio. Okay, and let me just yes. spell that. I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious, sure. but just to be sure. Uh, Del Vecchio, capital D-E-L, capital V-E-C-C-H-I-O. Dawn, uh, thank you so much uh, for sharing, uh, you know, this vision. I, I mean, I know the idea of ascension and frequency and vibration. I mean, everybody I talk to, uh, that's that's the only thing on their lips, you know. Um, mm-hmm. it's, yes. it's, it's really pretty amazing how many people now um, are starting to speak this language and, um, you know, it, it's obvious uh, something is happening, you know. Uh, I, I just, yeah. uh, I, I'm just one to hope that the, you know, the transition isn't, um, I don't know, I, I, I was about to say isn't a painful one, but then I think about all the people that are struggling and suffering now, you know. Um, I, I just would yeah. hope that things don't get worse. Uh, before they get better, you know, if if that's uh, something to hope for, you know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but but I want to thank that could you be for the for your that you hold. I'm sorry. Okay. I was going to say no. That please. Could be the vision please. that you hold is that that beauty and grace of the transition. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, that would be so important, you know, it, because, I mean, I don't have yep. a problem with the shift. I mean, that's been something we've been dreaming of. I mean, to have a goddess temple in every yeah. neighborhood, I mean, imagine. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, it, but, you know, uh, I, it just, uh, you know, scares me that there would be riots in the streets, you know, but, um, you know, I have to take those ideas out of my head. <laughs> Um, so, so thank you, Dawn. Um, I, I appreciate your wisdom and your guidance, and I think you've given us all a lot of food for thought. Thank you very much, Karen, and may you be blessed tenfold by Divine Mother. Thank you. Thank you so much, and appreciate